three months even as the BBI heads over to the counties. But enough about the Building Bridges Initiative. We want to take a look at the latest societal issues that are arising under the black and white banner as we usually do on this particular day every Thursday. It would be interesting to highlight this particular issue. Now it is touching on the world's oldest profession, prostitution. One way or the other, yes, it is a social vice, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a couple of issues emerging around this, and it's worrying one way or the other. Number one, due to the restrictions, uh, the guidelines due to um, securing the lives of Kenyans, the curfew is put in place and all that, Due to that, we might have seen a shift in business ideals in terms of the sex workers. They might be working a little bit earlier um, and might have changed their area of um, working from not just the areas of having fun, bars and all that, but over to residential areas. And this is... Uh, it actually points a, a tough... It puts us in a delicate situation because children are there they might be exposed to this one or the other it is a social vice but we can close our eyes to the fact that it is happening and once it gets deeply entrenched into the society it might be a challenge rooting it out especially when young ones are exposed when the family is definitely under fire we just want to talk about this and joining me in studio um, is one of the representatives Penina Mwangi who's a director of the bar hostess empowerment and support program Penina Mwangi thank you so much for making time I'd like to begin on what exactly the bar hostess empowerment and support program does uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so I'm the director of Bar Hostess Empowerment and Support Program. This is an organization that works with women in the bars and also sex workers. I'm a human rights representative with special focus on sex workers and, um, and on the issues that sex workers face. Okay. Um, that, that's interesting. Um, I've just mentioned what precipitated this particular interview. And I know this is a delicate balance because on one side, as I mentioned, it's a societal vice. But we can't close our eyes to the fact that it is happening. And right now, due to perhaps COVID-19, and I'd like you to begin on that note, um, due to COVID-19, we have seen some of the sex workers move from areas where they used to do business over to residential areas. Children, families live there. I'd like your quick reaction to this as we build up on it. Okay, so with COVID-19, everything, everything changed. Everything changed at once. So like bars were closed initially, initially just a few months ago, like 90% of the bars were not operating, meaning that the women working there, the women hanging out there, the lodgings, the brothels where they were working have all been shut down. But these women are breadwinners. They have families. They have people depending on them. What do they do? They have to do what they have to do. They have to go to fall back to, their, to the estates where they live. Also, we find that uh, due to the economic situation and, all other, and other financial uh, preferences, mm -hmm customers are preferring to go to to have their drink in the estate rather than go to town. So you find like if Betty lives in Umoja, John also lives in Umoja, um, they meet and agree to to have their drinks and their entertainment in Karumaindo, then they realize we both live in Umoja. So why don't we why don't we go to a bar, to a home bar? Why don't we, don't you then, instead of paying for a lodging for 1500 in Karum, in Luthuli, why don't you just come to my house and uh, instead of giving me 1000 I'll yeah. get 2500 mm -hmm. I think those are some of the, th the things that are, that Happening. are coming up. And it's yeah. a reality, we must say, because we've also seen with house parties and the young ones, mm -hmm. you know, how COVID-19 has forced a paradigm shift in terms of thinking, but... Are mm -hmm. there concerns about sexual exploitation? Surely our children live there. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't this something that we should be worried about? Are you worried about this? Yes, and for a long time, for the longest time, for almost 20 years of bar hostess existence, we have worried about that, and we have, we have been asking for, 
for space, for a platform to discuss with government issues. Because when they say that our sex work is illegal, when they criminalize everything about sex workers, then it is hard to control, it is hard to regulate, because uh, it's a crime. So they, sure. they wouldn't discuss. In the 20 years I have been working with, bar, with sex workers especially, nobody, not one politician, not one government representative has said, come, let's sit down here. Come, come, let's understand the issues that women are facing. Let's see how we can correct this. Let's see how we can blend this. Let's see how we can regulate the industry. Mm -hmm. As far as they're concerned, it is criminal. And right now, it, uh, politi politicians are worried about how they look, how they appear, and nobody wants to be caught dead uh, engaging in conversations with sex workers, except for honorable passaris. Okay. Power to her. Okay, that, that, that's proper. But the immorality issue mm. still stands out. And back to my question, when apart from the politics, apart from the politicians and what they're propagating, mm -hmm. um, as the basic unit, the family unit, um, I have a family, you also have a family, the children back at home when they're exposed to such vices, uh, irrespective of the illegality, it will definitely affect how they view such things growing up. Speak to this. What, are you, what concerns do you have about the exploitation that might come with a change of business module, quote-unquote? Okay, so uh, the exploitation, uh, the exposure yeah. and everything, uh -huh. those are some of the things that women who are in our organization talk about and we try to see how best to address that. Okay. Actually, it is not as bad as it would be if the women were not talking amongst themselves and deciding this is the way to do. We always have a line that we don't cross as much as uh, people may not see it that way. There's a thin line. If people were doing what they, what they feel like doing, it would be much worse. So they have, there has been a lot of, um, a lot of effort in our area and within the sexual community to not expose children because we are also mothers. Mm -hmm. to not, so we do not try to expose children. Some of it will happen anyway. You talked about house parties. So many ills happen in, in neighborhoods. We cannot limit only to... Yes, to but sex work. Uh, quite so. And we also can't turn a blind eye to mm -hmm. such saying so many happen. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay, let, let's change the conversation. What might you think um, was the impact of COVID-19 and what impact has it had on, I don't know, girls, on young ladies? Because I, I know boys are also vulnerable to this, but girls mm -hmm. might be more um, vulnerable to it. What impact has it had, the COVID-19 pandemic, that might leave them more vulnerable to exploitation when it comes to this particular issue? So, as I said, we had the closure of all entertainment spots and some of the women were actually living in those brothels. They had to come to the estates. So, there was loss of livelihood, of course. There was, um, there was just exposure bringing their business home. Mm -hmm. There was just exposure in the neighborhoods. That, that one is clear. And, of course, um, a lot of psychological, do I say emotional torture, mm, yeah. <laughs> emotional, th this living in, prox in close proximity in the families and both of, all of you have no sources of income. Mm -hmm. So it brings a lot of quarreling, it brings a lot of violence and young girls most specifically have faced the brunt of it. Okay, and it's quite unfortunate. What, how can we address some of these challenges? Because it's the realities, it's a reality of the times we're living in, mm -hmm. um, COVID-19 has definitely had an impact across board. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the sex work is included, but how do we address this challenge that yes, um, it is happening, yes, it's a social vice, but we need to protect um, the children, the family unit also somehow needs to be protected. What, what do you think? How do we approach this challenge and address it? We can start by by empowering the, the women. The, mm -hmm. the women are the center of everything, we know that. And as we continue to find out, 
uh, how can we improve their economic well-being, uh, their, their nutrition, or what is lacking in their family. And maybe it takes a very small effort for government to do that. A small impact, even like maybe 1% of the GDP, would make a very big difference to... To check, to check on the, to check on the well-being of the family unit. So I think government has to be serious. We need to take resources to, to the families. We need to take attention to the families. But we also need to address the vulnerability of women. It's just that COVID-19 has exposed them. But these women were always vulnerable when it comes to HIV, when it comes to sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday I was seeing about the report on on uh, reproductive health, uh, unwanted pregnancies. Mm -hmm. I was seeing the report on that. And all this is affecting the young woman, is affecting the sex workers. We need to be able to support all this from a human rights perspective and not making judgments. Okay. Um, in, in terms of human rights perspective, because mm. not just about um, the sex workers, boiling it over, we've seen um, the entertainment joints, as you mentioned, they were closed for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, they closed by 10 p.m. And we've seen people start, you know, party after party, what they call party after party, really mm. early, um, maybe into the afternoon hours. And there's nothing wrong with this, but it points to some of the issues that are facing the society as it is, is it to the small things that actually highlight the bigger challenges, you know. So um, as we conclude, as the Bar, uh, as the bar and Owners Association, um, let, let's talk about the entertainment scene in the country. What, what do you make of it and how exactly should we look at it going forward? Uh, the I think we can just even start as a business person. Yeah. From the, there's a willing buyer, there's a willing seller. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, times have closed. So uh, by nine, everything should be shut. So what they do now is start earlier. Mm. The party starts earlier. It seems, And yes. uh, it's because um, people are idle. They, there's not much engagement happening. Mm -hmm. So people will want entertainment. And I think... Uh, the fact that it's there, it's available, and it has really moved to very good class. It has gone way up from what it used to be. Okay. And I think people, I think everybody is happy. And uh, Okay, okay, yeah. I get you. Um, as we conclude, the issue mm. about um, the business occurring in the suburb area, mm. I sort of understand that their mothers and their fathers, they need to put food on the table at the end of the day, but it's a social vice. As we conclude, mm -hmm. um, what balance needs to be struck? Because, I, I mean, um, exposing children is definitely not a good thing, and I'm sure they don't want to do that, but it is happening. So what balance, and how can we strike that balance? Engagement needs to be done with neighborhood, uh, neighborhood organizations, neighborhood associations, and you do that by engaging people positively, by engaging the women positively, not by attacking them, not by ridiculing them, and not by uh, just arresting people, because that doesn't solve any problem. But positive engagement, these are people who are mothers, these are people who have mothers, these are sisters, it's, it's possible to engage them positively and it's possible for them to understand mm -hmm. what needs to be done in neighborhoods. Okay, that's really proper. Penina Mwangi, uh, thank you so much for your time. Our director at a Bar Hostess Empowerment and Support Program, uh, definitely doing work with um, the basic unit in society um, uh, where we'll definitely continue highlighting some of the challenges uh, brought forth in the society, this being one of them, and we'll definitely continue highlighting even as we address this particular challenge going forward striking a balance is sort of important no discrimination as well